everybody. My name is Kayla Banks. I'm 15 years old, and this is my crazy dad. <laughs> Hi, I'm Philip Banks, and I'm her dad, and not the crazy part. <laughs> so we're here to talk about kind of what Jim hit on is how to raise a family in tech. But it's so much more than that. It's about getting young people into the community and kind of what we're doing and kind of best practices and things I want you to get about what you can do to bring more young people in the family, I mean, in the community. Because um, how diverse are you if you're not considering youth? It's, we have so many women's and ethnic uh, diversity efforts, but not enough youth. And to add on to that, how diverse really is your community if you don't bring in youth? We like to think our communities are diverse because we include women and different people of color. And even at the Women's Open Source Lunch, we were talking about how, you know, who decides what's diverse? And the most overlooked group is youth. We're literally hacking into Unix, Linux kernels, hacking into Minecraft, making games. We're the most overlooked group. And in like a whole bunch of programs, like for one example, I use a, a popular program I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard of it. It's called Slack. And I use this to collaborate among teens around the world. And when we were approaching Slack about what we we're doing, we found out that we legally aren't even able to use Slack because we're underage. And there's a lot of platforms like this that put age restrictions. And we literally are stopping in the tech community from progressing because of these age restrictions. So our talk has changed like 10 times listening to a lot of the good talks uh, at this conference. And, uh, and we, were, we thought of that one because uh, Guy Martin did a talk yesterday about Slack and community. And we had a story about Slack. And just in, for Slack's purposes, we, we could also say we've talked to them and they're trying to lower the age limits so that younger people can use it. So we wanted to start out talking a little bit about who we are and why we're here. But Jim hit on most of the stuff, but I'll introduce our tech family. Over to the right is my, my son, Philip. He's the oldest. He's 28, and he's a sysadmin and, and a IT guy at school. Then we got Hunter right next to him. He's a, a video game developer, and if you Google open source gaming, you'll see a lot of Hunter's posts. Uh, over to the left, we have my son, David. He wants to be a surgeon, but Somehow, we're going to tech that up. I don't know. We're building cyborgs or something. We, I, I tell this boy we're going we're gonna to work with brains and connections. And then we got, at the bottom, my daughter, Kayla. And I think you've met her. But tell us a little bit more about you, Kayla. Well, like Jim was saying, I've been speaking at conferences since I was 11 years old. And this was my biggest one at O'Reilly's OSCON, which I did the keynote. And that one was a group of about five. 4,000 people in the room, but really it reached a bigger audience because that talk kind of went viral. And I also had the pleasure of visiting the White House under President Obama. And <laughs> <laughs> notice the. <laughs> it's a lot different there now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was also featured at the Melissa Harris Perry Show, and we also got to go to the mayor of Los Angeles, and that's also the. CTO. Yeah, Chief Technology Chief Officer. Chief Technology Officer. My City best of LA. School. There's another picture a chief for diversity. The chief, chief Technology Officer for the United States of America is a woman for women who want to know that. So it's a, it was a great role model for my daughter just meeting her and talking about being in her position. So the first thing we want to talk about is how we do things. How, uh, what's, what's our method? So, Kayla, how do, how do we engage? How, what, how do we use engagement? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm 15, so I still go to school. And every ride to school, we usually have a discussion, whether it's a debate or just a regular conversation about a whole different bunch of different topics. And usually we try to relate it around tech. And I feel that, like, having these talks on the way to school, on the way home, it makes us engaged. Like, the reason why kids like the stuff is because it pertains to us. We're not just going to, you know, write a whole bunch of code just for the purpose of it. It has to relate to us. And I think engagement is a 
crucial part in involving youth in the tech community. See, we, we believe in a, a, a lot of reverse engineering, and I think that gets a lot of youth involved in something, and it's whatever thing that they like to do. Uh, so at Southern California Linux Expo, where I'm one of the chairs there, and my kids have been involved since the beginning, what, 16 years ago, um, we get, uh, we've started to implement more youth programs and we're starting to get more high schools to come and, and, and you'll find that you ask them to reverse engineer stuff and just think, how does that work? How do we get that there? How do we get that there? And then it gets them started on a path that will get them to every community. Like we have even some kids that are kernel, kernel developers and I mean, one who just like idolizes his line of storables, and so he was like, you got to talk to him when you get there. So we, you get that engagement, and then you get them started, and then sky's the limit. Next is goals. What do we do with goals? Well, goals are a huge part of our year. And when I say goals, I'm not just talking about New Year's resolutions that everyone sets and forgets about during the year. The goals that we set, we try to tend to set 10 goals, eight goals that we make for ourselves, and two goals that our dad sets. And most of the time, they're tech goals. Each year, I try to learn a new language. And, but although they're not always tech, they're, always, they're also like personal, physical, and emotional goals. And these goals make me strive to be a better person. Like last year, my goal was to learn JavaScript more and teach more kids, and I was able to do that. Yeah, a lot of times we'll feel like, oh, man, we're slacking. But when you start looking at those goals, and we do like every three or four months, we do review of your pace on your goals. And I tell the kids, you know, me and my wife set two of their goals. They can set eight goals for the year, but we'll set two because, you know, you kind of want to guide their course. So if you're mentoring or you're working with youth or niece, nephews, then having them have some investment in their own goals is the key thing because, you know, then they think, stop bossing me around. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of doing this myself. So I, we, the, the thing with getting youth into our communities is the barriers. Youth feel fear in doing something with adults. And, you know, and a lot of people I always ask Kayla, like, you're not terrified being in front of a lot of people that are adults, you know, the kid, are the kids' audiences, you know, easy, and she's always done adult audiences. Tell us about embracing the fear, KB. Well, one particular story is when I was 12 years old, my first big audience was at PyCon in Montreal, and it was a lightning talk. And what my dad told me was, you can get up on the stage, you can completely fall, just trip over this whole stage. And one thing to remember to do is just laugh at yourself. And I guess that advice worked out because I'm here speaking in front of all of you guys today. <laughs> <laughs> so if we trip or anything on this stage, we are going to laugh at ourselves. <laughs> if we flub any lines, believe it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, so that one, we pretty much said, uh, like the fear of, of doing stuff. A lot of the young developers, they are afraid of even submitting code or, or entering in a lot of these things because like one of the kids that was a kernel developer, he, he said, you know, his code getting rejected was like the biggest thing to him. And yet I was like, go back, go, go there again, keep doing that. And once they get over that, then they can do everything. And so that's why I tell them every project isn't your first one, your, your best one. You know, it, it's, some things go wrong. And interviewing a lot of programmers before they, you know, spoke at our conferences, the conferences we've been at, uh, one of the main things I asked them, you know, is like, how did you get started in it? And a lot of them said, I wanted to make a video game. Somewhere along the line, that didn't work. And I remembered that was my first thing. When I was 10, I wanted to make a video game. So I learned that didn't work, but it led me into so many other way, places. Comparing yourself to no one. Kayla, tell me a about that. And another thing that ties into this is imposter syndrome. I'm a victim of imposter syndrome, and I know a lot of people in the tech community are victims of it too. On the way here, it was an 11-hour flight, 
And I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, like, why am I being able to fly all the way to Prague? Like, I'm not as smart as most of the people in this room. And literally, when I was sitting in Don Foster's talk yesterday, like, five people raised their hand and said that they contributed to the Linux kernel. Like, we're literally contributing to the Linux kernel. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are capable or have already done stuff like this. So I have to constantly remind myself to compare myself to no one and instead motivate myself and inspired by other people, like Ruben, who, for example, who had yeah. a great talk on Monday. <laughs> yeah, that was a great talk. If you missed Ruben's talk, you know, seeing a, a young kid, 11 years old, if I'm correct, still 11, right? Yeah, and, and him getting up on stage and saying all the stuff that he's doing. If he's not in your community, if you're, not, you're looking at him like, ah, oh, that was nothing, then, he, you know, your community is, is, is not as diverse as you need it to be. Um, uh, the biggest thing about the, this one for me, and I don't know if you have some more on this one too, Kayla, is that adults, uh, the one thing, uh, we, we work with a lot of students now. We've started programs around LA and hopefully around the world soon, where we're dealing with a lot of young people that are averse to tech from the start, and to get them from ground zero to where you, you know, where they want to be is a hard thing because I know with my own kids, I had to, you know, stop monitoring them and, and micromanaging them and thinking they have to take the same path as me. They take, everybody takes a whole different path to where they want to be. So if you do it your way, they're different than you, and so we're that's our big thing with schools. Did we learn anything like that with uh, some of the students at uh, some of the schools so far? Did you get? Yes, and like my dad mentioned, we've been working with schools, and most of the time we realize that a lot of these kids tend to just need a bit of motivation, and from on there, you have your own self-motivation, and I think that's crucial. And even going to conferences like this, I tend to get triggered and have a whole bunch of self-motivation, even going to some of the booths like Red Hat and all the other ones. I go home and with all these papers and I'm like, what am I going to learn next? Like, what am I going to program? Yeah, so, um, and a lot of the people at the booths, the clouds of booths, on our new thing is Kubernetes, so we're just like, what is that? And so we probably stopped by a ton of your booths and, and, and grabbed your ear a gang of times about that, because I want high school kids to start learning that kind of thing. So, from there, we start taking it to the next level. So, where do we want to go from there, Kayla? They're probably asking themselves, okay, you told us a lot about what you're doing, a, a lot of things that, you know, we could do. What's next? What's our, what are, what are we doing? Well, we're not mostly focusing ourselves now. Now we're starting to focus on other kids, getting other kids involved. And so, as you can see right now, we're teaching at schools, and we're starting our own company called Banks Family Tech, which is going to be on Facebook soon. And during the summer of LA, we taught at um, Parent Middle School and Tom Bradley Middle School. And as you can see, so these are some of our kids. And teaching basically is the next generation. Like we said, youth, they're the overlooked group. And so directly reaching out to this group and teaching them, you know, you got to be the part of, you've got to be the new generation of the tech community. And this is part of our teaching at schools. Yeah, you notice uh, some of these are even young. This is a class of fifth graders. And I, I don't like to put down any languages in particular because everything serves its purpose. But we do programs where they're actually learning real code because that is a lot of STEM programs, science, technology, engineering, and math programs are, in the United States are focused on just saying we're teaching some coding and we're not big fans of that you know like one of the things I really loved about Ruben's talk is he was he was doing some Python right in his head. and young kids can learn this now a lot of times we use things like scratch is a language that it, it's like scratching a chalkboard for me to hear because they're not really learning life applicable languages so uh, so we're teaching in schools, but, um, and what do we want to do from there? We, uh, we want you to, uh, our next thing was like, how do you get involved? 
We want there's so many tech minds in this room that can, that can give back to the communities. There's, if everyone in here multiplied that knowledge at one school, just going to one group of kids and getting one kid involved, imagine how many kids around this world would be. Because I, I tell them, this is just a tool. You can do whatever you want in life. There's some people that were graphic design, and that's what my son Hunter, that's my son Hunter teaching his, uh, these two schools. That's my son David down there helping with this. Hunter was more graphic design. I applied it to video game design. So, how are we gonna, um, that's how you can get involved and help us. So now, Kayla made this. I was, so tell, tell us about this one, Kayla. So, this slide is de dedicated to our community. As we mentioned earlier, we live in Los Angeles, but even all the way on the other side of the world, we literally have so many familiar faces like Nithya, yeah. and um, that's our friend Guy and Adrian and all these people. And so being in tech really enables a community, and that's what we're trying to pr portray. And yeah, these are all of our friends there. Yeah, Shout so out to Nithya. A lot of the people we've seen here today, so. Like I was saying, we've changed the side so many times, seeing so many new faces. You know, Nithya talks and Kayla and the Women's in Tech talk came out with a couple new friends. And, and then I was like different people we didn't even know were here. You know, Jono, you see, we see him in every city or <laughs> I don't know where that guy ever stops at the house. Uh, and uh, of course, our new friend Angela is here uh, running this conference. and and. So community. So having my kids in this community all this time, there's so many people. We can, we, I mean, even when we went to the White House, we, there was people across the room like, hey, there's so-and-so, and they're in the tech community. And then they offer their advice or anything if they know them. But imagine if more kids are involved and get these contacts and everything, like, like some of our young programmers, like Ruben, get these contacts, and then they help them, and they help develop them as programmers and as developers, as designers and engineers. So, now with all that, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna reach out to us? Uh, yeah, are you guys gonna reach out to us? Are you guys gonna, <laughs> you guys gonna contact us on Facebook? And so, there's our Facebook, that's my primary source of contact. And you can also, since we have to leave right after I have to get back to school, you guys can shoot us an email. And lastly, you guys can for sure tweet us because our Twitter game is about to be A1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not as big on our Twitter, but we're gonna be all over social media. And this is the thing, we wanted to get everybody else involved. And just like, you know, we want you to reach out to your communities, Reach back out to us if you, if you want to start an effort or anything and wherever in the world. This world's a small place, as we've shown. It's a small place. And, you know, we're here and there. We talk to people all over the world all the time. And get some of your input, some of the things that work for you. And if you need our help, the same thing. So, on behalf of myself... And, and the Banks family. <laughs> Representing the rest of the Banks family from all the way from Los Angeles, California. We like to say thanks. Thanks for coming out. Thank nice. Hey, hold on one second. So I want to make, hold on one second. So this, and this is unscripted, so, but okay. I want to make a deal with you. All right. So uh, many of you know, I don't, is Clyde Seepersid in the audience somewhere around here? Have you met Clyde yet from our no, organization? So Clyde runs all of our training and development uh, at the Linux Foundation, and we have uh, certification tests for Linux sysadmins, mm -hmm. for uh, Kubernetes, for uh, a whole bunch of different technology. We have self-paced training, online training. We would love to offer for your classes in Los Angeles access to that, you know, free testing, free certification. So uh, as you're building out that program, hopefully oh, you yeah. can take us up with uh, Adrian that. Adrian was on one of our slides. He's, uh, so he, yeah, he said he, we, you guys would love to help. So we, awesome. We love it. Well, let's do it. <laughs> we love it. All right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.